in the time when the the Russians start to bombing, killing our our people, killing children, killing civilians. You can find the answer for that. You just have to, like most of the Ukrainian people, stay together, start to fight, fight for for our future, for our freedom. Where, where were you born, Andre? I'm born in Ukraine. It's, it's a small town, uh, about like 80 kilometers from Kiev. What's it called? Dverkovshina. My family moved uh, to to Kiev when I was two years old. My my dad been military in Russian army, USSR army, mm-hmm. and um, he is my sister. Example is she she's born in. Potsdam in east of Germany. That time that was, you know, life of uh, military uh, people just travel around the the countries and uh, work for the for the army. That my family been been doing for a long time. That but finally my dad find the place and uh, stuck in Kiev and that was great life for me. Good, very good memory. Can you remember where you were when you found out that the invasion was happening? I was uh, here in London and my mom called me and yeah, she started crying and she said that the war is started and I couldn't believe in that. That was, uh, I'm still not believing. You know, even almost two months, we've been in a war against Russia, and I still, I still can't believe this happened. How did you feel when you got that call? Devastation. It's absolutely devastation. So, and then th- 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 that was a very similar feeling for next, like I've said, ten days. You always try to find the answer why it's happened. But uh, in the time when the the Russians start to bombing, bomb, sending bombs to to our cities, killing our, our people, killing children, killing civilians. You know, you, you can you can find the answer for that. You just have to like most of the Ukrainian people is, is, is stay together, is start to fight, fight for, for our future, for our freedom. Was your mom calling you from Ukraine? Yeah, she, she was there in that time. And uh, my sister is still a lot of uh, siblings, uh, still in Kiev, still in different part of Ukraine. I fear for for, for especially for my family, but for everyone, because you know you the, actually that that I- invasion of Russia, that big and massive and first, like I said, I, I never expected that, and then I was thinking about what can happen because we try to have independence for thirty years. We finally start to, you know, they build our future, and then countries start to coming up uh, very nicely, and uh, that was it. Could be, you know, good start for us to to be part of uh, European Union, to finally to get the dreams to be independent country. How are your family now? Are they safe? Yeah, my family is right now. I mean, uh, who's 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 in Kiev? You're not hundred percent safe because uh, you never know when the missile can hit your home or hit your 
car will hit you, <coughs> road towards is you walking. But uh, this is a situation what I think right now we we facing and then most of Ukrainian people have to live with this. What's been the hardest moment for you in the past two months? Just uh, thinking about war, thinking about what's going on, thinking about uh, friends, population, Ukrainian population, all the people who lost the houses, all the people who have to leave the leave the country, uh, coming refugees. Most of them is families, mother and children because men have to stay in Ukraine and fight. Did you ever think about going over to fight? Yeah, I was thinking many times, but uh, that was not, is probably not the best solution. The best solution is using my uh, connection, start to talking about war, helping with humanitarian aid, you know, helping with the refugees, create the programs, talking to charities, uh, this is what I've been doing the last two months. Ten years ago, Ukraine was hosting Euro 2012. You played in that tournament. Can you believe how much has happened to your country in that time? Yeah. That, that also, you know, ten years have been a long time. And then from 2012 to now, the country, country is very improved. And like I said, you know, the, we start to believe it. We can build the, our independence from from Russian, and uh, we decide to move it to be part of European Union. And then there's a lot of things been done. Even 2014, the war is started. You know, we we, we have to call um, how how is this going on that. Uh, conflict, everybody was saying the conflict, that was not even conflict, that was a real war. But it started 2014 and then now it just extended in much bigger, um, much bigger war. And yeah. Does it upset you that Ukraine's promising future has sort of been paused by this? Yeah, of course, upset me a lot. We, we have big potential and, and people is very nice. The country, the people, hard workers and, and never complained it. You know, we know we, we start to be a lot more united. Before the war, I saw there's something been changing in the last two years, new generation coming. Uh, people start to travel a lot more. And, mm, inside of the country is a lot more intelligent. Um, young generations start to coming up. We start to be more united, integrated to the world. And that was, uh, in my view, was a lot of good things been, been, been happening, especially in the last 10 years. Obviously, you've seen the kind of support that's been offered by the whole football community. How has this support made you feel? I think, uh, especially you know, in the, in the, in here in England, been incredible support, especially from government and uh, from from uh, association, football association. I spoke to uh, Yarmolenko, I spoke to Zinchenko, all, all the the manager and uh, teammates, uh, fans supporting. Uh, Ukrainian players is supporting also the and all the situation what's what's going on in Ukraine the, is uh, everybody was looking to give the hands uh, sending uh, all the humanitarian aid and helping with the refugees try to get the families here but also this very very important sign you know the the football uh, community united together and send a big message to to the world. We we all against the war. We want to stop a war, stop in Ukraine. 
you managed Zinchenko and Michaelenko, within you in for the Ukrainian national team. Are you proud of how they've dealt with this all? I know how it's been difficult for the boys. Yeah. You know, and uh, I've been, I tried to support, I, I tried to call him and encourage him to, you know, not give up to, to, to thinking about uh, the game, just try to go in the stadium and play for your country. You know, play for your fans who is supporting you, uh, which club you're playing, but also, you know, because at that point, the boys are representing Ukraine and then we need um, that visibility uh, in the world, you know, that Ukrainian athletes can do very well. So how do you feel about President Zelensky right now and how he's led the country? I'm so proud about him. I'm proud uh, and probably some most difficult situation he stand up he united the people he's showed the massive courage to every leader in the world he, he didn't leave the country he stayed there and then that was probably uh, you know been great uh, signal to everybody, you know, Ukraine gonna stand up and fight against uh, injustice. And I think uh, he's been a great leader for us. You've talked about how you've been doing some work for refugees. Can you tell us a little bit about the work you've been doing? We create um, some program. Uh, I've been working in the two projects. One project has been, been here in, in London. We work with a Ukrainian ambassador and then try to, you know, get most most possible uh, Ukrainian people here. There's also um, a lot of teams been offering uh, some homes and then places in academy. And then we slowly moving the, the young uh, Ukrainian football players to, to come here in London and spend time in academy and play and then second project I've been doing in uh, Milan uh, with the mayor of Milan Giuseppe Sal and also um, that was a very important project to to help especially for young kids to finish the school and then to find this the, the, the place to also to play some sport what can the people who are watching this video right now, what can they do to help? Soccer Aid is a great opportunity for you to play your part for Ukraine. Don't be indifferent. You can donate or you can buy the tickets or watch on TV. This all can help Ukrainian people to survive and Ukrainian refugees to have better life. Um, I'm from Harrison, oh, uh, the city on the south. And I know, I know that. Yeah. 